Hello, everyone. My name is Lee Olson, and I am so glad you're here because today, Dr. Brad Jackman, Dr. Google, as I like to call him, and I are back with our For Love of the Horse series. And today it is brought to you by Platinum Performance. It starts from within. And what better partner than Platinum to join Brad and I in our quest to help you and your horse? Because all three of us truly love horses and want the best for you and your animal. So if you get anything out of the show, give us a five-star review. Tell us what you'd like to see in the future episodes or how this has helped you and your horse. I hope you love it as much as we enjoyed making it for you. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lee Olson Show. Today, we've got a very special guest, Dr. Google, as I like to call him. Dr. Brad Jackman is back with us. And if you caught his story on our blood, sweat, and blessings portion of the show, uh, you can hear all about his story and everything he's done. But the short version that you need to know, know is that he's one of the very best in the industry. He's extremely knowledgeable. He's been around some of the greatest horses in the world. Brad, what is the alphabet soup behind your name again? Hi, I'm a DVM, Dr. Veterinary Medicine. Got a master's in physiology and pharmacology. And then uh, DACVS stands for a diplomat, uh, American College Veterinary Surgeon. So I'm a board certified veterinary surgeon. So, so uh, to the normal horse owners out there it means i did a fair bit of extra training schooling uh you know basically just doing anything possible to try and better myself and, and learn more that i could and and then try and do everything i can to help the, the equine athlete or, or you know equine in any way shape or form so well that's awesome. And speaking of that, one of the things I've always loved about you, we both kind of have the same mission statement. We love horses and we're just here to help them. And this portion of the show is completely devoted just to that. So we're going to just pick some topics. And today we have picked negative plantar angle. So what that means is the hind feet, palmar means the front feet, plantar means the hind feet. So we have noticed both of us in our businesses what would you say? Would you call it an epidemic? I would call it an epidemic. I mean, it's not like, it's not an epidemic in the way that, oh, especially because of COVID and all we think of infectious disease and so on and so forth. But epidemic means it's just widespread through the industry. And it's no doubt widespread through the industry that it's, it's becoming an issue that uh, we see extremely commonly. You know, I mean, I wouldn't doubt if I saw it at least once a day in my veterinary practice absolutely, and so um maybe more and it also skirted throughout the entire equine industry so it wasn't just quarter horses it wasn't just thoroughbreds it wasn't i mean we saw it in the hunter jumpers the dressage the rodeo horses the reigning cow horses you know um you know race horses you see it in uh, to a large extent and and so you know, anytime you have something that affects that many horses throughout the entire industry yeah it's an epidemic Absolutely. So um, one of the things that I always consider, you know, when people bring, bring us a new horse, you have to remember we're therapeutic shoers, bring, people bring us horses for lots of reasons, but a lot of times people will bring you the very hardest horse to shoe, in my opinion, and that's the one that isn't working great, the underperforming performance horse. And personally, that's my favorite horse there is to shoe. The lame ones, the really lame ones, the hospitalized horses, they're kind of actually kind of easy, really, because it's like this big smoking gun, like this tendon hurts, shoe for this package, boom, horse is better. We're all, we're all heroes, right? Well, when you've got this horse that's making everybody scratch their head, a lot of times, in my opinion, it can be this. So the take-home message to me would be is that if you have, tell me what you think about this, Brad. If you have kissing spines, if yeah. you have an SI problem, x-ray your horse's hind feet. And in my opinion, there's a very high chance that you're going to find out that your horse is negative in the back. It's not guaranteed, but to me. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's critical to helping develop a top line on a horse or maintaining the top line. on a horse. And so if you want to try to say, okay, from a kissing spine standpoint, what am I going to do to try to help maintain them? You got to develop top line. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you want core strength, right? And, you know, we basically in a, in a nutshell, you'd look at, okay, front feet take a lot of the concussion, right? 
hind feet are that's the propulsion that's where the power comes from or in the hind end mm -hmm. and so and then the hind feet are part of that deal and so anytime you're you're starting with a foundation underneath that engine right. that runs this thing or propels this thing um you want the best foundation under there you can or you're likely to have problems and you looked at them a lot in fixing horses and i did too um but i also looked at negative plantar angles a lot and you know i'd see it like in pre-purchase exams and other things like that and i'm like okay well we don't really have a clinical problem yet <laughs> right <laughs> right yes yeah, that's the pertinent word, right? Yeah. So if, if we can do anything to help prevent developing a problem, why wouldn't we? Right. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So to me, that's that's always the tough one is like, that's why I absolutely hate. I don't dislike it and I don't hate many things, but I absolutely hate shoeing on the road while Jamie's rodeoing because you'll run into that horse you just described. You'll run into a horse that I see a vision of this animal just dangling off a cliff and I'm going to go shoe it because the owner thinks there's absolutely nothing wrong. So don't change nothing. And all I see is liability everywhere. Sure. Two, I don't even want to do it anyway. <laughs> it's hard. I'm used to having a shop. I got all these tools I got to pull out. But the take home is, is like, I know your horse is negative and I don't want to even be a part of anything that's going to go downhill. So I, I think, I think, uh, I mean, I agree with you 110%. And I think, but what we need to do is we need to explain what negative is. Right. Not everybody out there is going to understand what negative is. So explain it to me. Well, I mean, so a negative angle basically is, is that when you look at the coffin bone mm -hmm. in relation to where it is within the hoof wall, okay. right? It should at least be, if, if you say that the bottom of that coffin bone is parallel to the ground, Right. Then that would be what we consider a neutral angle. Would you so also call it a flat and bone? Yeah, it'd be flat. Okay. And then if you have a positive angle, then the toe will be a little lower than the heel. So it's raised up a little bit. So more like, a, you know, a higher heeled shoe type thing or something for people or that right. type of thing. Negative means that the heel is lower than the toe. And so you know, and in reality, there are some horses that you can get by with saying being neutral or flat. Most of them should be at a positive angle. The degree of that positive angle is going to be determined a lot by the conformation of that horse or right. almost exclusively by the conformation of that horse and the foot growth. Um, but there should never, ever be a horse that's negative angle. So do you get caught up on the angle, the percentages, the plus four, the 52 degree um angle what do you do you have a do you have anything in mind that is your baseline that or is desirable or do you just look for that horse as an individual and you just want to try to get him positive yeah i mean there is no ideal angle on a horse amen thank you horses. for that thank you there is an ideal angle for each individual horse <laughs> and right. and if you look at it it's all going to be determined by the slope of that pasture and steeper pasture and horses are going to have steeper foot angles mm -hmm. longer sloping pasture and horses are going to have a little less you know angle to their foot um and then if you're actually confirmationally you're looking at a horse you stand them up square you look at them from the side and their pasturing angle on their front end will match their shoulder angle. Right. So if they're a steeper shouldered horse, they're going to be a steeper pasturing horse. They're right. going to be a steeper foot angle. So I think, you know, from a very basic standpoint, yes, there's some definitely, this is an ideal angle for this horse. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there's some other angles. I think they should parallel each other. Right. So that pasturing angle should pretty much parallel the front hoof wall angle or dorsal hoof wall angle. Right. But I think a lot of people ignore this, but in reality, your heel angle on your foot mm -hmm. should also match that angle. Right. You know, and so, you know, we can have low heel horses, but we can also have underslung heel horses and all these different aspects. But, you know, so it, it, it varies from front to front or from horse to horse, but there is an ideal angle for that particular horse. Right. Okay. So let's move on. Your, your answer to, it doesn't have to be, of a specific angle because horses are individuals, right? Sure, yeah. Sure. I could get behind that hundred percent. Yeah. The one thing that I really dislike is that when we do run into 
a negative plantar angle, right? This the vet might say, put an open heeled wedge shoe on him, and to me, that is one of the hands down worst things you can do. It's like a temporary fix. Yes, did you fix the bony column alignment problem? But what I've found though is most of these horses that are negative behind on the hind feet, they're there because of heel failure. Sure, ninety percent of the time. Sure, yeah, maybe more. That's being kind of. Well, and I think I think you know genetically we're darn sure breeding horses that absolutely you know absolutely. that grow less, maybe less hoof hoof on the hind feet, but they're definitely growing less heel than they used to in the past. You For know? sure, but. You know, I mean, I would think that there's a few key things people can, you know, they, they could leave this broad podcast. They could go out and they could get somebody to kind of stand up their horse, kind of pseudo square on a fairly flat piece of ground, stand back and look at that horse. Mm -hmm. And there's a few key factors that they could see, you know, Hey, is this happening on my horse? And if I see these chances are, there's a really good chance that your horse has negative angles. What would that be? Uh, the first one for me is the front hoof wall, the dorsal hoof wall. Got it. Okay, so that hoof wall should parallel the pastern, and it should, in essence, for the most part, all the way from the coronary band down to the ground surface, other than we might have rolled the toe just a little bit or that type of a thing. Okay, there you go. But exactly, so it just parallels right down. So but if you can see what I'm doing right now, I'm just showing you. But the take home that Brad's saying is you're trying to see this horse without an x-ray. So this is ultimately what you're saying, yeah. right? Yeah. And the reason why you're saying that is because that means that the bony column alignment is lined up. And if the hoof wall is not, say, like it's tipped out here, well, what that would mean is that the horse is flat or negative, such as that, correct? Right. And then, and then if the heel's too low, they're negative, then all they're going to do is grow more and more toe out there. Right. And so what happens is if they're, you know, and you can see some negative angle in barefoot horses, and you can even see a little bit of a bull nosed dorsal hoof wall in a barefoot horse. Right. Because they're just rubbing their toes off as they're breaking over. But in general, if they're being trimmed, shot, and you have this bull nose, then what's happening is you can't leave all that extra toe out there. Right. So what do the people do? They, instead of saying, well, I'm going to be just trimming this from the solar surface and working my way around and getting up to there, they start rasping it from the top down. And then pretty soon, you know, you stand that horse up and he's got this real rounded bull nosed appearance to his front hoof wall. Yeah. So on that topic, uh, I don't know if we talked about this or not, but last year when I was at the International Hoof Care Convention or um, International Hoof Care Summit in Ohio, uh, Ramon Batella, I think his name is. Sorry if I brute messed your name up there, but he's an awesome vet farrier in Costa Rica. And he was talking about the bull nose comes from this. Do you agree to that? So the coffin bone, when they get negative, comes up and then ultimately creates the bull nose right here. Yeah, I think to a certain extent, but I think it's actually a lot of it's happening because if you look at, if you x-ray those horses, and mm -hmm. I think it's critical to x-ray these horses, but we can get more into that. But if you x-ray those horses, and if you look at that distance from the front of the coffin bone to the hoof wall, and you'll see where it's thinner, mm -hmm. lower. well, it's thinner lower usually because somebody's been rasping it off or taking it down more towards that toe trying to bullnose that off right so i think some of it can be related to i mean let, let's face it i mean anytime you start changing angles like that and you start lowering that heel you're likely affecting good blood flow on the solar surface and also up through that that you know the dorsal hoof wall area as well because that's how the blood flow happens and it comes down the back for the most part mm -hmm. comes underneath and then back up for, to a great deal and so you're affecting that as well but I, I i i personally think a lot of it has been creative trying trying to remove extra toe in well i don't know if it's an inappropriate manner but it's not in the ideal manner right 
Well, to me, as a farrier, what I've run into on these horses, a lot of times they'll say, this horse has so much toe. He has so much toe. Right. When And then you x-ray him, and then there's no depth literally at all at the that rear part of the right. coffin bone. Right. But the toe is long. Okay, so you take a little bit off. And in certain instances, I've hit blood there right. chasing this long toe. Well, right. what's that tell you? That's not long. Right. It's not the toe. So to me, I almost see these as separate issues. Like I realize the foot can all run off together. But in my experience with negative plantar angles, it's heel failure, meaning you have to fix the heel. So you fix the back half of the foot, and then all of a sudden these problems start getting better. No doubt. The sad part about that, though, is I've probably only seen maybe a 50% success rate. And that's success, meaning getting out of wedges, getting back to normal shoes. And in my opinion, I think the reason is, is because this horse was born that way. I think when he was born, he was born with problematic feet with low heels. And I feel like it, it's very annoying to me when people say the last guy wrecked this horse. Right. Because yes, maybe he didn't help him as much as he could, but I don't really don't like pointing fingers mainly because I don't like fingers pointed at me either. Sure, sure. <laughs> but I, I think farriers don't set out to ruin horses. Oh, I, I agree, think I agree with that hundred percent. I don't think anybody wakes up and says, man, no. let's go wreck some horses no. today. I think people might miss the play. I think that they might just think that, well, he's doing good. Just shoe him. Or even worse than that, they'll think I'll put some extended heels on him because a lot of vets think like that too. So you do put the extended heels on the negative horse. Guess what happens? You crush them even more because length is leverage on the end of your shoe. So to me, the only way you're going to fix them is by loading the frog and unloading the heels if you have a real crushed heel problem. Yeah, well, and is it underrun? Is it not underrun? Is that how far underrun is it? Is mm -hmm. it is it curling? You know, is it not only underrun, but is it curling in too? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, there's the old adage, you got to shoe to the widest part of the foot, right? right. And I think that's, it, it's it's critical. And I think it's especially critical with these these negative angled horses, right? But a lot of them, you can't get to the widest angle of the foot. And so you have to unload that hoof wall mm -hmm. in the back. The only way you're going to be able to do that is to load it up through the frog. Absolutely. You know, and, and um, you know, and then it depends on how severe it is and how much foot you have to work with. Because we'd have these horses come in and some of them have all the foot in the world to work with. Right. right. And so and once you have x-rays, once you know how much foot there is, how much depth of sole there is at that toe, all those different things. Some of those we could get nearly corrected through one trim. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And then there's a ton of them that, you know, that's not the case. Uh, or they just don't have enough foot on them to be able to do it. And those you're going to have to piecemeal through it. It's going to take a multitude of shoeings. Absolutely. If you're ever going to get there, but a multitude of shoeings to try to try to try to get there. I think ones that are truly, for lack of a better term, man-made. Right. Are the easier ones to fix long term. Ab absolutely. You know? Those ones can be saved. Yeah. Yeah. Not saved. Well, yeah. They can be. Yeah. I, I hate when people say fixed, but when they they can be. Fixed. You can get them. <laughs> you can get them to where they can trim like a normal horse. Yeah. You know. Um, you talk about needing x-rays on these horses. Yeah. Well, I'll throw you one more here. So uh, I think everybody needs to realize right now, though, that you're retired. Yeah. So you're not benefiting in any way from this. Like vets with x-rays, to me, like they maybe it comes off wrong to you, but it is one of the cheapest forms of insurance, in my opinion, that you could ever get, especially if you're horse is ma you're making money with them but i mean even if he's your hobby i mean you could save yourself so many future problems and not maybe years at the end of his life maybe less injections by just n knowing what's going on well i mean you know and i i, I look at it fairly simplistically i mean in that and we know there's very few absolutely ideal you know footed horses out there what? where they're absolutely <laughs> the same size foot very well balanced, 
between the left and the right, between the fronts and the backs, between the toes and the heels, all the way around, you know, that type of a thing, you know, right. as we have bred for athleticism, right? And anytime you start breeding or selecting for something, mm -hmm. the athleticism, the disposition, what color, whatever it is, right? Anytime you start selecting for something, you start selecting against something else. Absolutely. And one of the things that has been kind of a little bit ignored through this breeding cycle where we're, we're trying to get these best athletes out there is the foundation, <laughs> which is the foot, right? Right. And so, you know, when we, so I, I actually look at showing x-rays as preventative medicine. Absolutely. Okay. So, so we always think of vaccinations. Mm -hmm. We always think of deworming protocols, you know, as preventative, preventative medicine. Right. I absolutely think you know, annual foot radiographs will pay back tenfold, if not a thousandfold in the long term Absolutely. on the longevity and ability of a horse by helping keep that horse balanced. Now, if I have a horse that wants to grow really crooked, annuals too long. Absolutely. I mean, I might be x-raying them quarterly to try and make sure they're, they're staying good. I mean, you know, who knows, but it's, it's, it's damn cheap insurance. Right. To be able to know exactly what's going on inside, because, you know, as you know, I mean, the hoof wall in and of itself sometimes lies to you. No, angle yeah, wise, right? For sure. Yeah. So you can sit there and look at a foot and say, I think that's a pretty well balanced foot. And then you x-ray and you're like, man, this thing is way out of balance. Right. Or vice versa. Right. You can look at a horse and think, God, you know, this horse is pretty out of balance. I think he's going to be high on the inside, outside, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you x-ray him, he's like, no, he's actually pretty dang well balanced. It's his coronary band that's lying to us. Absolutely. And so the only way I know to prove or disprove it is radiographs, x-rays. I couldn't agree more to that. Um, as you know, I mean, we've worked on a lot of crazy stuff here. And you'd think that I would be able to visually recognize a lot. And I've heard lots of farriers brag about their eye. I've seen lots of people say that, I know I can tell you exactly where the coffin bone is. And I've always been kind of like, huh. But as I'm getting older and worked on a lot of horses, uh, crazy horses to boot, um, I can't. I no. mean, I mean, I can come close a lot of the time, but when someone drives you a horse six, eight hours, they're not interested in getting it kind of close. close. <laughs> Give me your best estimate. Yeah. Hey, yeah. we're going to shoot them three yeah. to four times. And yeah. I trial and error. We'll have your horse maxed out in six to 10 months. So. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't never going to work. No. So that's why we teamed up with the local veterinarian and, and we have an x-ray because this is what I would like you to take home to be. X-rays are important. Yes. Crucial. Yes. But if you want your farrier to be successful, take your horse wherever you got to go, wherever your farrier can meet you with the vet and get some x-rays taken because you're just guessing. Like if you're looking at an x-ray from six months ago of the horse, was the horse long? Was he, was he just shod? Was he long? Was he mid shoeing? You don't know. So that's why what we do is we take the shoes off and, or we'll x-ray them, take the shoes off, then we'll x-ray them, trim them exactly how we want to. And then we will make a plan because if you make a plan before that, you're guessing, in my sure. opinion, and I am not a fan of guessing. Well, and there's some horses I think you got to trim them, mm -hmm. and some of them you'll x-ray them again. Absolutely. Right, because you're like, hey, you know, I mean, there was some balance issues here. I don't, I don't know if I got it all, <laughs> or I got close, or, you know, there's more to do, and now I need to know, do I still have enough soul depth, foot wall, wall whatever, mm -hmm. to still be able to continue to work on this, or know that you know what? I mean, we got to come back for round two in five weeks. Absolutely. And that's that reason right there is why what we do here is it's just a total base price. Like we're, we're going to take as many pictures as we want to, and it's going to cost you the same amount. And the point is, is that I think every veterinarian that works with a vet should have a program like that where it just encourages more like, Bed or um, shoeing x rays, you they should just have a package and to where it's like 100 bucks a pair or whatever, or what, whatever, pick your number. Yeah. But the thing is, is if you could encourage your farrier to just take as many pictures as possible, 
I'm not talking about wasting money. I'm talking about, do you love your trim? Because it's very easy to take an x-ray. So many people come here and they say, oh, I got you x-rays so that you can do a good job. And with their best foot forward, and they're just trying to be nice and help their horse. Well, thanks. But as soon as I trim this horse, the deal's off because this horse was, wasn't trimmed ideal. Let's right. say that or this or that. Right. For that horse. Yeah. So then you get done shoeing them. How do you know it worked? Yeah. So that's why I just think that after trim, after shoeing x-rays are crucial. Yeah, if, I, if you want to save time on downtime, well, if you don't care if you get to ride your horse, it don't matter. Yeah. But I mean, you know, we can talk to the owners this way and this, that, but if we're truly looking to say, we're going to try and do the very best for that horse. Right. I don't care. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. you know, performance, just I want the horse to be as more as comfortable as possible, whatever. Nobody should ever be scared of foot x-rays, right? And right. if anybody says, I don't need x-rays, or if anybody <laughs> sits there and says, well, you know, we could do the x-rays, but I pretty well know what's happening here or what is that. I'm telling you, you know, you only truly know what's going on in that foot if, unless, if you do the radiographs. Absolutely. And you know, nobody should ever be scared of trying to gain as much knowledge about something as they possibly can. Yeah. And this is easy knowledge to get. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think it will save a lot of money in the long run, you know, because you might be able to prevent some lameness issues and that type of thing. And it can be money in the fact of, okay, well, you know, money in trying to treat a particular lameness issue or diagnose a particular lameness issue, or just fact of time off if this horse is going to need more time off it's at different times mm -hmm. and you know time is money absolutely and if you have time off on a horse that costs and so i don't you know one of the things i would say you take you know people i hope take away from this is is that if anybody says well we don't need x-rays that to me is the red flag absolutely okay and i don't care if it's veterinarian i don't care if it's farrier i don't care if it's trainer I don't care who it is. You should never be scared of more knowledge. Absolutely. And it sounds crazy if you're listening to this, but I promise you there's people out there that will tell you that. And to me, it's just mind blowing. And, but I, in hindsight, I really think it's people that are afraid of being thrown under the bus, which happens a lot if you're a farrier because you don't ever want to look bad, especially mm -hmm. at the vet. But if you're working with the right people, and we all come together and be like, hey, we're doing whatever it takes for this horse, like it should be, then you shouldn't be insecure at all. And no, and I and, mean, and you're just gonna learn something anyway. And and I guarantee you, I mean, I, you know, I did this for you know 37 years, pretty much. I mean, lameness was my forte, right? Lameness right. and surgery. And you know, and I will tell you, I mean, I would get fooled by feet all the time. <laughs> Me too. Right. Yep. In 37 years. And right. this is what I did. And so x-rays were critical in my practice for what I did of trying to help these horses. Right. And if I can sit there and say, well, 37 years and blah, 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 and I still got fooled all the time right. by a horse's foot without the x-rays, then in reality, I don't think there's a person out there that, you know, unless, unless they have x-ray vision or something, you know, themselves, which no, I don't know. They're lying to does. themselves. Yeah, they're, they're, they're sticking their head in the sand. They're being ignorant about it. And, and I can also tell you, we never did it just for monetary gain. Oh, you know, this is a way to get some money out of someone. Cause that's the other thing you'll hear as well. You know, vets just want to x-ray the feet because they're just trying to get some more money out of you. No, no I mean, we're trying to do what's best by that horse. And right. this is a way, easy way and a non-invasive way to gain a ton of knowledge about that horse. Absolutely. And just for a fun fact, how many x-rays do you think you looked at per day at your clinic? Oh, shoot. While he's thinking about that, <laughs> I asked him that because if he can't, if he gets tricked, I mean, I can be pretty dumb. So me being tricked isn't rocket surgery to anybody, but him being tricked though, how many x-rays do you think you looked at a day? Oh, hundreds. You know, I'm going to guess you know, three to 400, yeah. three to 400 per day. And this guy can't look at a foot and read it without an x-ray machine. So I think we can safely say 
that if you're even wondering about your horse, just go get him x-rayed. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, and I'll say, you know, I mean, there's a way to take ideal x-rays, but any x-rays are beneficial. But you do want to try and, you know, get the angles, you know, have them positioned well, that type of a thing. So it's not just, you know, oh, just, you know, horse can be standing in any way, shape, or form. That your, is. Your, your, that, yes. Yeah, your plate can, your, you know, x-ray generator can be angled at any certain degree <laughs> or angle or whatever. I mean, Because it's just a moment in time. And if you take a bad moment in time, I mean, I can make myself look six five too if I want to, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. You're not? So yeah. Right. Just <laughs> just under about <laughs> half a foot under. Uh a good friend of mine, a podiatrist, um, Dr. Sammy Pittman, even if you show up with x rays, he'll take his own x rays. Yeah. I mean for unless, that reason. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you know, unless, you know, somebody brought me very recent x rays. And when yeah. I say very recent, I mean, they have to be within a week, probably, right. to have an idea of what this foot is. And that those x-rays were well positioned. And, you know, you can, you, you've seen x-rays, you know, you can look at x-rays and say that's a well-positioned x-ray, not a well-positioned x-ray, right? Other than that, then yes, we were taking our own. So one thing, like Brad's talking about right now, so let's just use this for example, okay? So let's imagine this is an x-ray that you can see right here. And that would be a pretty decent x-ray right brad yeah yeah but when you can see both sides of the coffin bone that means that you're taking it this way instead of dead on this way so if it gets a little bit like this i mean you'll see x-rays from the vet where you could see both heels well that means they were shooting at an angle like this instead of directly from the side or if it was up here that meant so yeah. things yeah. and and looking through the joint space, right? Because you can actually have them well aligned, <laughs> right? And still see both sides of the coffin bone if they're way out of balance. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. Stay out of rabbit holes now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. But I want to talk about uh shoeing them. So shoeing the negative plantar angled horse. So I have done it every right, every wrong way possible, just for the record here. But I did a study on a horse, and we work on a lot of we work of everything, but we work on a lot of nice barrel horses. Right. This was a son of Epic Leader. If you have a son of ep Epic Leader, X-ray the hind feet anyway. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, just a joke there. Well, but but <laughs> but, but <laughs> notoriously, you know, racing thoroughbreds every were time, man. Old horses every time, right? Mm -hmm. And especially in the burl horse mm -hmm. any speed event type horse we have actually introduced more and more thoroughbred genetics that's their into faster that. yeah and it's yeah. a race and it's a race <laughs> and they're faster but we're also throwing some other things at them too which is these are horses that don't want to grow as much heel yeah you know speaking of throwing things at us i'm sure all the quarter horse people are throwing things at us right now <laughs> who knows but who knows? anyway so when we're when we're shooing these so this, this son of Epic Leader actually did a study on him because I've been shooting him for like four years now. And at the time, he was negative, and I mean bull-nosed. And I, we weren't rasping it in there is why I kind of believe right. what Ramon was saying about right. the coffin bone rotating, tipping up, and then the wall kind of rounding around it, creating the bull-nose. So that makes me kind of think that might be a thing. But I got into rockers on him. And you know what? I got him sound and kept him sound. And I was alternated between huge frog sport wedge pads, full pads. Like this is his, <laughs> that was a lot of stuff on this horse's foot, right? And he did pretty good in that, but he didn't feel right in it, right? So the owner would say that, yeah, he's sound, but he doesn't feel right, which is very real. I'm right. not making fun right. of that because the short version is, is like, if they can't run them, it don't matter. So I switched to rockers and, uh, my buddy, Sammy Pittman, he's big into that and he does a great job. But what I found on that foot is definitely could have been user error, but I could get the horse sound to where I could get the horse to where the coffin bone was at a positive right. angle and the horse was doing good, but the hoof capsule still looked undesirable in the heel, especially. Yeah. But the whole hoof yeah. the, just looked upset. Yeah. So 
what I did is, um, believe it or not, well, we've already kind of fixed the problem, right? So now we're kind of in the management game trying to get this hoof capsule lined out because the horse has been doing good. Build as good a foot as you can. Yeah. So we ended up toe clipping it with a, fr- uh, with a, we alternated in 3D wedge pads and those are better than the full pad because the toes cut out, they were designed for racehorses. So those are better, but we went to a leather um, wedge pad, which is just a very slight pad mm-hmm. wedge. And man, those hoof walls, they, I don't think anything comes back a hoof wall anyway, as good as they do in leather. And since then, I don't know, maybe once a year, we have to go to a 3D pad just because they're a lot more rigid. They're a little more firm and a little bit more wedge. So tell them, why, why'd, you, why'd you do the rock? Because they didn't do as good in the frog support, all the package on the bottom of the foot. Yeah. So I was trying to get to where an open-heeled shoe could put on there so the horse could perform better right but the problem is i touched on it earlier i absolutely hate the the wedge shoe even on the front foot but on a hind foot because the foot already wants to collapse at the back half so then you're going to make the frog even farther from the ground by putting this wedge shoe on giving the frog even farther to go so now it's if you look at if you take a picture of that horse from the very back what you'll see is this horse just falling through that shoe. So that's why I say they need frog support of some kind. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, and I think, but the only way you're going to get long-term correction is you got to try and trim toe from below, if that makes sense. Oh, the solar sure. aspect to trim them up, right? I was assuming that would. Yeah. And, and, and well, but it's, I think one of the things that a rocker will do is it'll allow you, and, and I don't, you know what it allows the horse to do is is really kind of change the way it wants to bear weight through that foot to some extent and i Absolutely. think it really promotes a blood flow aspect there oh couldn't agree and more. i don't think there's Especially hard- in a hospitalized situation yeah and i don't think hardly anything will help build more soul depth than blood flow yeah, than blood flow right so those well, i i think they do great and and the only way you can then sometimes trim enough toe from underneath is you gotta have some degree of soul depth there absolutely right and so you you got to get the sole depth to be able to get the eventual train trim and get that toe off Absolutely. so that you can do it. But then long term wise, unless you can say, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of foot here, and I got yeah, I got under end heels, but I can easily trim this back to the widest part of the foot and all these other different things. Or now you got, you know, a more normal heel and a more normal okay, I can load through the frog. Mm-hmm. Then you got to do something artificially, and on most negative angled horses heel and it can be front end too but especially on the hinds you know you can't trim the under run and the curl out of those heels if you do you're going to be in the blood right and so you know somehow you got to unload those absolutely and then throw it up somewhere you got to load something let's mm-hmm. load up the frog that actually does help promote blood flow through that foot too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I completely agree that, you know, you got to get some depth of sole if you need it. Sometimes you don't need it. Sometimes there's plenty of sole depth there at the toe. Right. X-ray will let you know. You know, everybody talks about sole depth and you, uh, most of the time they're talking about like an over trimmed horse, like, Oh, he doesn't yeah. have sole depth. Right. So everybody's looking at the toe, but what I've found out on these horses is that I can know immediately if they can be helped with just a trim or if they need something else by looking at the depth at the back of the coffin bone, right over the wings. If there's depth there, you got a chance. Yeah. If there's not, you're going to have to do something. And, and the way, what I tell them is that it's like a prosthetic. It's like, you know, if this $50 pad is all it takes to keep your horse sound and competing at a high level, well then hallelujah. Yeah. Because the biggest shame that I see is a wasted life. Like you're talking, you think you're going to really be catty when you're hurting pretty bad? No. I mean, I mean, I see these horses and I just wonder, you know, like, is this horse giving you everything he's got? You know, most horses are honest. They're going to try. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I love horses. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. One more thing. Yeah. So what I always tell people is that if you want to know Exact. If you want to know a good estimation, I guess, if your horse is negative, then step back on flat, level, hard surface, take a picture of your horse, and then get out 
the markup app, if you got an iPhone, flip the ruler around, put it right across the coronary band of your horse and draw a line with it. If that line hits him in the belly, your horse is negative. Yeah. And if it's somewhere around the knee, you can imagine what the coronary band would do. Just imagine a line going through the coronary band of your horse's hind foot. And if that is hitting at the knee, that would tell you that that coffin or that the plantar angle is positive. And if you imagine it rotating up to the belly, that would tell you that plantar angle is negative. Yeah, show, show, them, show them what you mean by the coronary band looking at the angle. Okay, yeah. so coronary band. So the horse is standing there on the ground like this. This is a front foot, but we'll pretend it's a back. <laughs> so this is what I'm talking about. So you could tell if it's shooting lower, this horse is going to have a more positive angle. If this, if it's lower in the back, it's going to be negative, and you could tell that by just right here. And you do want them standing fairly square, right? Yeah. So if the foot's way up underneath them, it's going to change oh, yeah, it a little bit. If it's way behind sure. them, it's going to change it a little bit. But yeah, yeah, won't change as much as you think. But yeah. So next question, wrapping this up, do you think this is a personal theory? But what I've always thought is that the deep flexor is the biggest, taking the biggest strain right here, right? It, well, yeah, I mean, it's taking a huge strain. Okay. I mean, you know, because it's a propulsion, navicular bone and concussion and those things don't play near as factor. But we'll see it in the joint. Oh, for sure. Know? But hang with me here. Okay, so this horse is negative in the hind feet. Yeah. His heels are dropping. Sure. The deep flexor is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. Yep. And as that deep flexor runs up the back of the leg, it ties into four muscle heads, right? Yeah. Okay. So now you've got all this strain on four muscle heads just cresting as the hip comes over, right? Well, so, and, you know, in all honesty, you also have check ligaments in most horses on their hind legs too. Right. So, yeah. So we're pulling this horse apart on the top line. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So that's why, like, I'm not a vet, and no offense if you – do this but i feel like if you inject the si take a step back and figure out what the actual problem is what do you think about that well i think it all comes to foundation right and i and and but so little, yes yes you're sugarcoating it don't yes, be sugarcoating yes, it. But this is what <laughs> that's why i tell people you can have the fanciest sports car in the world right right you put it on lousy tires it still ain't going to perform worth a crap absolutely right and so if you're not supporting those things the way you need to support them, you're going to increase stress somewhere, or right. you're going to so significantly reduce performance so, that, you know, because the horse is going to protect itself because it's feeling this added stress in different areas. So if you had a sports car, you wouldn't take it to the cheapest tire place in town. I would not. I would <laughs> not. And I would not try to go race it on the hardest course possible without <laughs> ideal tires. <laughs> so, Maybe have a little go through, you know? Yeah. Check yeah. it out a little. So so I mean it's just it's just so yes, they will pull themselves apart with negative plantar angles. Well and, and it's and, not just about the angle, it's about the and, and whole here, horse. here's the other thing. I mean as you know, and I'll say like in the first half of my career, you know, I hardly ever saw hind foot lameness. Mm -hmm. Occasionally. Right. But I hardly ever saw a hind foot lameness. And as my career went along, I saw more and more hind foot lameness. And I mean, I could literally block out their hind feet and make these a whole new horse. So did wide. you not see it in the first half? You know, I think to a large extent, we were building a better horse back then. I think right. we had less issues because we had better footed horses. God, I see rabbit, and, rabbit holes everywhere. Right and, now. you know, <laughs> and the other thing is, again, this is one of the reasons, and if they listen to the other podcast was, I always looked at my horses on hard ground and soft ground. Yeah. Because you have, I mean, one of the other areas that, yeah, the deep flexor tendon, huge stress. Mm -hmm. But these horses will literally just bruise a tar out of their heels doing it, but they're bruising themselves internally. Absolutely. It's the bone coming down doing the bruising. Absolutely. And you can look at them on a hard ground and then you can take them to the arena and look at them and they will look like two completely different horses. Absolutely. And that is just how uncomfortable they are on these hind feet. Well, let me ask you this. How many horses do you think stop working as good 
because of negative plantar angles and don't show that they're sound unsound oh a lot of them yeah a lot of them absolutely yeah, yeah. i mean so if you, know, you wait you... until your horse is broke down he was probably screaming at you for a year huh oh yeah no and i think that's the thing is people don't recognize it because on most of the time most people don't ride them on hard ground and so they aren't showing up you know this you know extremely choppy gait or or something like that and then you know but or we'd have horses come in and they're like, yeah, this horse is lame. And, you know, they, they just knew he was lame up front. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you know, you know, I mean, but this is what I see. And he's lame behind. And he's lame way more on the hard ground than the soft ground. I'm going to start by blocking his feet. Yeah. And if I block his feet and it makes him an all-new different horse, yeah, I mean, he may have some little bit of issues, inflammation somewhere. But if I don't fix his feet, I'm not going to fix this horse. And then I think, then I also think about, okay, how, how much do we try to compensate for pain? Absolutely. And if they're Changes painful their stance. With every flipping step they take, mm -hmm. you know, well, compensation is going to be throwing stress somewhere too. Absolutely. Whether it be SI, whether it be through the back, whether it's, but you won't, if you have, and this is one thing I will say is, is that if you have two aspects, if you have a horse that won't develop top line, if you have a horse that is loose in the stifles, if they have a negative angle behind, you won't get those other things corrected without correcting the feet first. And they may need some more help getting things corrected. Amen. But also may be the only thing they need. You Amen. correct angles on the feet, the rest of it resolves. I don't know if you heard that, but you should back it up. Just say it one more time for all the farriers out there, would you please? Yeah, so especially you got a horse with a history, no top line, poor, or poor top line, has a hard time getting top line on it, horse is in good condition otherwise or a horse that's loose in its stifles you know so catches its stifles slopping the stifles doesn't want to hold a canter lead those types of things you need to really look at foot angle <laughs> and if you're negative angle at all behind yeah i can do some stop gaps to get a slight bit of improvement for a very very short period of time but if i don't correct those angles i won't ever fix this horse okay break this down simple style I'm not pointing fingers, but let's say your horse is a barrel rate, barrel horse. And would you, what would you think would be a common warning sign of this horse saying, I've got negative plantar angles? Well, I mean, in some ways. In the run. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of them, actually. You know, one is you, your time may just fall off, right? They are not going to extend through their stride like they normally would have because of the way their angles are. I think you can have horses that when they go to turn those barrels, that outside leg goes in a tremendous amount of extension. Mm -hmm. So if all of a sudden you got a horse that used to run around real smooth and now all of a sudden you're noticing the horse kind of dog paddling behind both uh -huh. feet together, that type of thing, that's a horse that's reluctant to push off on that outside leg that's or all of a sudden is going wide around a barrel. You know, those to me are some key things that says, you know what? I mean, I'm having some kind of a hind end issue. Right. And it could just be related to the footing. Absolutely. Anything else? Smoking gun? Oh, I'm sure there's something else. Okay. I want to talk about that real quick. So one thing that um, ends up with a horse, a lot of horses dubbed hind feet off yeah. is because the owners are saying it's got so much toe. Right. And yes, you are right about the rockers because like anything, Putting a rocker on correctly is a lot different than putting a, a rocker on and not knowing what you're doing. Sure. So if you're going to play with it, make sure you've got somebody bad to the bone. Because to me, I thought I knew what was going on, and I messed it up several, several times and got lots of help before I could finally get it. And the short version is, is that your rocker has to be way back clear back like at the wings of the coffin bone is where it starts and you just want to preserve as much depth there as possible that's the one shout out i'm going to give you but the other one is stop chopping their toes off you have to stop dubbing them off to where then that horse goes to push the toes gone and now there's he slips no there's yeah. no traction so when he if that horse actually has a toe behind meaning right here when this horse digs in, he can actually push off. The hind feet are for propulsion. The front feet are for turning. So 
horses on the hind feet, in my opinion, don't really need mechanics. What do you think? Yeah, you mean as far as? As far as I'm not saying you're going to talk me into putting this big rolling rocker. Well, rocker is even fine if it's correct because a hind rocker is not like a front rocker. Correct. So two very different things. All I'm saying is that the hind feet need their toe. And if you don't believe me, research any racehorse. They say three to four strides, the heels won't even touch the ground because the horses are just digging in with their toes and mm -hmm. pushing on. Yeah, I mean, that's why they put toe grabs on them, right? Trying to get the traction through the toe. And so, you know, I mean, you know, and then a lot of people get into, well, you know, okay, if I have that longer toe, then I have a longer stride length. And then it's basically kind of been disproven that Stride length does not necessarily equate to speed, right. right? And so, you know, they were like, oh, well, I don't want my horse to break over at all on the, on the hinds, right? No, we just break them over a little differently, right? We're going to square a toe or do something a little different on it. But they know break over just means the foot picking yeah, up off, the, foot ground, right? off <laughs> the ground, right? Yeah. And so, <laughs> so, I mean, you know, all these, all these different aspects regarding it, but I mean, you know, let's, let's face it. There's very few horses that need and it has to have a be a very specific medical problem where we dub a toe right when should you ever dub a toe you yeah. know maybe and, maybe a maybe a founder case to where yeah, the wall is just complete yeah. garbage yeah well or yeah you got so much separation there and then but you're talking natural thing. normal performance horse if no. you see a big yeah dumped off toe especially yeah, on the that's hind why you, that's why i'm saying you got to trim them from underneath there's a big red flag length. yeah yeah so the dub toe, the coronary band, those are the things people could take home and say, I'll look at, and I'm saying, hmm, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe my horse, you know, needs to get some x-rays or something. Um, but in reality, and then, you know, there's all sorts of ways of, okay, it, then it, then when you get into the heel stuff, you know, so once you get the toe where you need it to be and you get into that heel stuff, that's where I think the intricacies play. That's where I don't know you're going to get all the correction you want. And that's where, you know, in some ways, you know, was well, just like that horse you're talking about. I mean, I think these are sometimes horses that'll do really well for a while and something. And then mm -hmm. now nah, I just got to change it up. I got to try something different, right. you know, to try to try to do it, you know. So, so, but at least you can feel comfortable that if we get them at the right angle, mm -hmm. we're at least going to decrease stress and strain on the deep flexor tendon, the empire ligament, some of it through the coffin, down the bone definitely not be pounding those heels like we need to be, you know, where we're pounding those heels. And, and there's a lot of things you can do. And then, you know, you can look at, you know, top lines and all the different things and you can sit there and say, well, you know, yeah, we're adding stress here and here and here. Well, in reality, you know, you're affecting stride length and you're just trying to make it to where the, it's a stride length the horse prefers. Absolutely. And don't you think he's going to build more muscle at the stride length he prefers and the angle <laughs> he prefers? Absolutely. So, Instead of making them something that they're not. Exactly. That's the, uh, that's why I love so much about what you're talking about. You're not tied to a specific angle no. and either am I. Like I always say, like, even on our most intricate, crazy shoeing packages, we're just trying to get them where God meant them to be. Like just their natural, normal yeah. self. Yeah. And that's different for each horse. But I feel like when you start, when you look at someone's horse that's winning and try to replicate that, that's very, very dangerous. Well, and, and, it's, and you know, I, I'm going to tell you 30, 40 years ago, you could say, you know, okay, I got a horse and his feet aren't being really good. Well, I'm going to what? We're going to pull him out of shoes. We're going to let him go barefoot for a year. And more often than not, they would build a good foot back. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not the case so much anymore. The way we've been selecting and breeding these horses <laughs> they're not ever going to build a good foot. And I mean, there's situations where, you know, we can talk about shoes and everything else, but I mean, you know, sometimes, I mean, we're adding composites. We're basically, you know, building a hoof wall for them to try to get it to a more natural Absolutely. aspect too, mm -hmm. right? Some of these really bad footed horses, I mean, we're basically building them a new heel with composite <laughs> to try to build they're them prosthetics. back up. Yeah, they're prosthetics. You know, the beauty is, that technology is available mm -hmm. you know i mean 20 years ago 30 years ago we didn't have that yeah we just had to breed them right that's yeah. why we uh, i ducked you several times in this rabbit hole i'm gonna go down it <laughs> so how come you know like you talk to everybody that let's say back in the day i mean 
90s, even 2000s, way before that, of course. But, I mean, they didn't do injection. They didn't do special shoeing if they did any shoeing. And, I mean, you talk to some of the greats out there, and literally zero. Well, I have a theory on that. I am a therapeutic farrier, so I see some of the worst of the worst. But everybody wants to compare the barefoot trim to what? The wild horses, right? Right, right. Well, here's a newsflash for you. You're never going to trim this thoroughbred like that wild horse. You know why? Because every horse that had feet like that thoroughbred in that wild horse's family line from here back to Jesus' donkey died. That's what happened with those bad feet. And so what, so you do that, you know, after all these years, that's funny, but it's true. Literally the predators didn't go just pick one out. They got the slow one. They yeah. got the lame one and yeah, the weak one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, if you had good, hard, stru- hard um, hardy, strong feet, you were probably pretty sound. So I think that's how we got to the really good horses. But the problem is, is now We've got all these amazing bred horses. I mean, you're going to talk, you've got this world-class horse. It doesn't matter the discipline. If it's a metallic cat, I've been in every industry and they're all the same. If you've got this outstanding bred mare and she goes crippled, what are you going to do? You're going to breed it. But guess what? Mom went crippled because she tore her deep flexor. Right. Guess what the baby has? Long toe, low heels. Right. Very prone to doing what? Right. Well, and that's the thing is, is that, you know. Okay. Stepping off my soapbox. You know, people would ask me like (laughs) breeding breeding advice. And it's like, you know, I'm not going to get into the breeding (laughs) advices regarding, you know, oh, I think this cross is good with this or that type of thing from a foreign standpoint. But I would tell them, you know, but from a confirmation based on your mayor's confirmation, these are the things I would avoid. And then some things, you know, maybe to select for and trying to prevent, you know, injury, hopefully saying, well, we're going to breed a better horse out of this field, right? Yeah. So if you start with a low heeled long toe horse, don't breed to a low heeled long toe (laughs) horse, you know, right? If you start with a small footed horse, don't breed to a small footed horse, you know, right? And so, you know, granted, I mean, you still may get, you can breed to a good footed stallion and you still might end up with a full with a small foot, but right. But, but there are tendencies, though. Yeah, you know, yeah, you're trying, right? You're you look trying. at certain breeding yeah. out there, and they and definitely so, have tendencies. So I would make confirmational recommendations, you know, and then say, okay, you know, now if you have one that's by far, you know, the best cross, better athlete, this and that, and it's way better than anything else that you can find that might help promote promote the confirmation or genetics on a foal. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'd still probably go for the performance. For right? sure. And then do what you can to try to maintain that that well, uh, horse in the long term. But absolutely, but, well, you know that's the only recommendations I'd usually make from a breeding standpoint. Yeah, for sure. And there's no judgment here. I mean, like if I had one of those amazing bred fillies too, I would breed them. And uh, I just sure. know, I just know what comes with it, though. Right. Well, and then and, you know, and then sometimes some some things happen just from freak injury. Right. Yeah, and you don't want to ever discount anything from freak injury. But but the problem is, is that they all get chalked up as freak in, injury. And especially right. what I saw in the fraternity world, is no one cares because they're retired by five. Right. <laughs> right. Well, and, and that that's one of the curses of that, that whole aspect is. is oh, that, it's a shame. It's the most inhumane thing there is. Because there's a lot of horses that we can maintain for a year or two. Right. And sometimes that's all you need to do, mm-hmm. you know, to get them through their, for lack of a better term, larger money events. and so. Right. You know, get the earnings, get the earnings, you get more value. So, so it's, it's one aspect about it that, you know, that is what's different, you know, in some other industries is, is that, you know, I mean, you know, there's a lot of warm bloods. They won't even start English, breaking yeah. them until they're four years old, I knew or five years now. old, yep. you know, because those horses, they'll still be out there competing them, you know, when they're 15, 16, 18, 20 years of age, you know, versus the fraternity ones. You know, but on on the aspect about that is, I mean, there's good and bad about it all. You know, I think we're darn sure breeding things. I think the other reason why we see more injuries is, you know, I also remember the days when a full training barn was 20 head of horses. (laughs) You know, not the case anymore. And so things are, you know, high intensity over shorter periods of time. 
let's wrap this up for him. Hey, I want to throw one more thing in before we do. So we're telling you, get x-rays of your horse. Honestly, if you like your horse, just get x-rays anyway, like annual x-rays at least. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. Okay. So I'm going to throw one more curveball in here. Don't just take laterals. Make sure you take one from the front called the DP, right? Yeah. yeah. Because here's a case in point for you. We shod one of the very best barrel horses in the world. I'm not giving you any suggestions, but she's black. <laughs> uh, we um, have a DP taken, and this horse has been struggling for a long time. They also won 400000 on it. Back that up. 400,000, and I think she's five, I think. Yeah. Very young. We take that one, and this sucker's crooked. Been shod normal, a good shoeing, but it was wrong for her, for mm -hmm. her needs. And the, and the lady says, who's an amazing lady, cares very much about her horse. She goes, huh, they've never taken one of those before. Right. This horse has been shod wrong the whole time, despite the best effort. Hoof lied. The hoof lied. Yeah. Yeah, because when you look at it, it's a big, beautiful, good-looking, symmetrical yeah. black foot. So take some x-rays from the front, from the side, and um, look at the coronary band. If that is going up to their belly, you have a problem. If you have SI, you probably have negative plantar angles. If you have kissing spine, you probably have... Negative plantar angles. Don't blame it on your farrier. I mean, I'm not saying you don't need to change farriers or whatever. That's a different topic. But I'm telling you, these horses are predisposed to these. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. What else you got for them? I mean, that's just it. Ne don't be scared of information. Don't be scared of, of knowing, you know, as much about your horse as you possibly can. And the x-rays will do that. What about the warning signs? That's the biggest fear that I have. I love horses. And I don't like to see horses struggle. And when people, when you have a good horse, good horses don't stop working for no reason. No, try to find a reason. I mean, it can be all sorts of reasons, right? It can be musculoskeletal, it can be respiratory, it can be all sorts of different things. But you don't know without investigating. And you right. need to investigate it to try to know. And, you know, and certain people have certain skill levels doing certain things. And so, you know, my point is, is that, uh, you know, if if you're, the other thing I'd say is if you're not happy, and, and I was never scared of anybody seeking a second opinion you yeah. know, from me. I'd encourage it, you know, and we would do anything to help them. We'd, we'd send what we knew and our information anywhere because yeah. our goal was to make that horse better. Absolutely. And so, you know, if things aren't proceeding as you want them to or it isn't going well, look for another option. Absolutely. You know, and, and don't feel guilty about it. Got to be your yeah. horse's voice. Yeah, you got to be your horse's voice. You know, if you know there's something wrong, you know, and in all honesty, I mean, I would be amazed that, you know, we would have some clients come in and, and I mean, they'd be like, yeah, I just know there's something wrong with this horse. Couldn't put a pinpoint anything about it. And 95% of the time, they're right. There's something wrong with this horse. That's some of the, yeah, that, that's something I'd like to say. So, when you're trying to figure out what's wrong with a horse, feedback from a real horseman, I'll take that every time. You bet. If I have to pick that over x-rays or anything, I'll take it. Because, say, if someone tells you every time on the first barrel, this horse does this. Well, if he goes to the right first, you got a pretty good chance that it's his inside hind leg if he's talking about leaving. If it's entering, it could be the front right, right? So yeah. anyway, anyway you don't be. need to get caught yeah. up in that. But I'm saying the feedback from them is priceless, isn't it? It's priceless. And the other thing I love, like, especially like the barrel horses, is, is that, okay, because invariably they would come and they would come with a bad run or two, right? right? And I like, okay, I want to see a video when this horse was running good. Because I want to see the difference between those videos. I check the date. Yeah, too. <laughs> yeah. Because because some horses, I mean, they all run differently. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them can set their butts and curl around those barrels and go, and some of them, no. I mean, they're just not. They're going to go a little wider, and they're just not going to slow down though. And so, you know, 
there's different ways to run for different horses. That's good and advice. Potential. I want to see their best run. I want to see their worst. Yeah, run. I want to see what you think is the problem now, or or the bad runs, and then. But I want to see the good runs. I want, I want, I want to see it. We can blame ground to ad nauseum and everything <laughs> else, but you know what? I mean, you know, it's it's, it, I, and again, and I get back to it again and again. Horses generally want to try. They want to do the best they can for 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 you, and so, you know, let's try to figure out what we can do to try and put that horse where I think that's where the horse is happiest too. Absolutely, you know? they're winners too. Yeah, yeah. Our yeah. horse is amazing. Oh yeah, so yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, well, let's wrap this up. We're gonna have more episodes, more topics for you. Um, Brad Jackman, he is truly Doctor Google. So what I want you to do is rate and review. We need five stars so we can grow this baby. Then I want you in the reviews, I want you to put what you want us to talk about. We'll talk about whatever you want. So throw it in there. Uh, We'll also have lots of other special guests, but please rate and review. And I hope you have a great day. And I hope you are living out your purpose and enjoying every day. And I hope you love this country as much as I do. God bless. God bless America.